Hi there, this is Khalid from JetBrains. In this screencast, we'll be looking at Entity Framework 6 migrations and how Rider can help improve our database workflows. Before we get started, there are a few requirements. First off, we'll need the latest copy of JetBrains Rider. We'll also need Microsoft SQL Server. This feature of Entity Framework migrations only works with classic .NET Framework projects targeting the full framework. .NET Core is not supported. We'll also need Entity Framework version 6.4.0. Optionally, we can run SQL Server inside of Docker. Our goals during this screencast will be to create an Entity Framework database context, do some light data modeling, update our database with changes, and view those changes. Let's start off by creating a classic .NET console application project. Once Rider is ready, we'll add Microsoft SQL Server as a data source inside of Rider and create a blog database. By doing this, we'll see the effects of the database migrations we'll be creating later in this video. Let's make sure we can see our newly created blog database in our database window. For the final requirement, let's add Entity Framework using the NuGet tool window. As you can see, Rider immediately notices the presence of Entity Framework in our project and suggests we use the features of the IDE. Next, let's modify the app config of our project to include the connection string to our blog database. Great, let's add our instance of DB context. We'll call it blog DB context. We'll also add a constructor and pass in the name of our connection string. In this case, MS SQL. Once we have our DB context, we need to enable database migrations. Using the writer menu, we can create our migrations folder and the configuration for our DB context. Naturally, any good blog will have posts. Let's do some data modeling and add a post class with a few properties. Once our class is created, we'll want to use Rider to add a migration. Let's call it Add Posts. Before running the migration, we can ask Rider to generate a SQL script for preview, and we could run the SQL manually if we wanted to, but we won't. Let's go back to the Rider context menu and choose to update our database. When done, our database will have two new tables, migration history and posts. We can see that in the database window. Blogs also let users engage with posts. In our case, let's add a new comment data model. The properties marked virtual tell Entity Framework that a one-to-many relationship exists between posts and comments. We'll walk through the same steps to create the migration and update our database. When updated, we can see the comments table in our database window. A neat feature of Writer is we can use the database window to diagram the progress of our schema. Finally, Rider will let us roll back to a certain migration. In this case, let's roll back to before the comments were created. We can also ask Rider to get the current migrations found in migration history. Our database shows that only one migration has run so far. Refreshing the window, we now see the comments table is gone. I hope you enjoyed the overview of Rider integration with Entity Framework, and thanks for watching.